Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos Podcast with your hosts, Jason Shellcross and Alex Krogh. Let's go! Episode 27! Alex, how we doing, buddy? Jason Shellcross, Alex Krogh, back again. Leonard Fournette! Lily Leo, the Lily Leo, he's back, baby. I he's back. Woo! Oh, yes, boy. yes. Oh man, yes. Okay, well, he is resurrected. I did not yes. know that this is how this was gonna go. <laughs> yes. Leonard oh Fournette. Oh my gosh. We are the fantasy football sackos. Today we're talking yes. about all the latest player news and things to get you ready for your drafts. Uh, yes. We know the majority of leagues are drafting this weekend. And uh, we're also going to be giving away our top 10 draft tips. So, Leonard if, Fournette. If you're yes. excited for this hot goodness, too. Why don't you go ahead and yes. hit that bell, like, subscribe, so that way we can keep putting out more fantasy football content for you guys. Um, all right. Well, I guess we're starting out with some Leonard <laughs> Fournette news. Uh, Leonard so happy Fournette about this. signed a one-year, $2 billion contract to play NFL football for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, Jeez. Are you excited about the landing spot? Or are you just excited he got signed? Because I'm not so thrilled. I, there, I think it was all the Ronald I'm, Jones hype. Yeah, I'm faking it until I'm making it. Um, okay, so you're not thrilled. It's like I'm. War- <laughs> Do I have a choice, honestly? You're just happy he's on a it's team. One of those, yeah. Oh, he got picked up by somebody. That's great. You have a chance at the, the board bet the, again now. <laughs> Yeah, 12 and a half. <laughs> like, could he be a could he be a RB1? He'd have I mean, to score 15 so. touchdowns cuz he's going to only have like 500 yards. Like, he's going to be the goal line back. Do oh, you know man. that though? We don't like we don't know. But I I literally had multiple people texting me being like, "What do you do about the backs the Bucks backfield?" You and stay I'm like, away. I don't You stay away from it. If you've already had Leonard Fournette, I think you're happy. Like, if you already drafted him, I think you're happy with where he landed. Uh, Bruce Arians is like, Ronald Jones is still our starting running back, which Bruce is terrifying. Bruce Arians said but it's his job. Nothing's changed for him. And he said that he Leonard Fournette is a heck of an insurance piece and that they'll see what role he has out of camp. So... A heck of an insurance piece. Uh, Where do you draft Leonard Fournette if you draft this weekend? What round? It's a great question. I I know where. I mean, he was already going in the tail half of the third, early third, fourth, fourth, when he was the sole. Right, where he was the sole guy for Jacksonville. Can't take him there. So, no. Uh, right. Obviously, he falls a little bit from there. Ronald Jones was going in the fifth or sixth round. Does he replace where Ronald Jones was going? Do they both go in the fifth, sixth round? Obviously, if he's sitting for like for my money, if he's still sitting there in like round eight, nine, ten, obviously I think you have to take him because he the potential be there, value is there. So I mean, based on that, round six? Yeah, I would say I would say I guess I would probably for both of them. Yeah, I was gonna say I'd probably drop them both to about the sixth. Um, also all reports are that LaShawn McCoy is going to be the third down back. So yuck. It's just a three headed monster out, at right. least until Fournette learns the system. And I think that Bruce Arians runs a complicated offense. So I think it's going to be a while. I mean, second half of the season, my money is on Lenny, right? Like, yep. I just, I think in the meantime, yeah, I, he's like, I a think goal you just stay back. away. I think you just stay away from it. And if, like if somebody takes him this if somebody takes Leonard Fournette in the sixth round, if somebody takes Ronald Jones in this in the sixth round and they end up being an RB2, you're like, hey, congratulations. Good job by you. Well, like, do you really want to be the person that's do do you want to be the person that's taking the risk to get a potential zero return? Which one where, would you take? I mean, hopefully. Head to head. Who would who I, do you I pick? would take Leonard Fournette. 
I, I, I would too, I would hands Fournette. down. There's he no was a top why. three, top five pick the, in the NFL draft versus Ronald There's no Jones. reason why they would pick him up to not use him, but they also have Shady McCoy. Like, they they have Vaughn, who they just drafted. Like, I don't... I have no idea what's going on there. I don't think they do either. The Again, the later you pick, the more clarity you might have. Maybe they'll cut somebody. Maybe, they'll, maybe they're going to cut Shady over the weekend, and then maybe that improves Fournette's value at least a little bit, but... I, I think it's just a total stay away. It's, I mean, classic Tom Brady backfield where it's just like, I don't know what's going to happen. Probably shouldn't use them. We don't know if they're even going to be fantasy viable. But at the same time, like Leo being there and him potentially being a goal line back, does that somewhat discount Mike Evans? Does it discount Godwin? Does it get discount Gronk or OJ Howard, even though he's not getting drafted? I think maybe a little bit. Oh, see, I don't think or, so. Or, or even anything, Brady. I think, I think he's a better runner. I think he's the better running back than Ronald Jones. I think maybe it helps him like be more efficient on first and second down. And so they're not in like third to long situation, third and long situations where they're trying to convert longer third downs. I think it might help the offense as a whole be better like talk about a star-studded offense that might like it was already fantastic before it's really star-studded now but yeah it's it's definitely the most talent that tom brady's had around him and he just happens to be what 42 or something like that like mm-hmm. it's almost not fair to a 28 year old tom brady at, at this point so yeah i i I don't know. Stay away from the backfield. Find somebody else. But if if you get to the seventh round and and there's some guys sitting there, like f it, fire away, pull the trigger. I think I think you have to. If if for I I think Fournette. I think probably. I guess my initial reaction is like, I think Fournette is a is a better running back than Ronald Jones. I think Ronald Jones will have the job oh, at least yeah. initially. But I think that like. You would have to think that Fournette will eventually take over the early down duties altogether, right? And so if you can get him in the sixth or seventh round, then he's could potentially be like a league winner at that value assume in the second half of the season. I don't know. Yeah. It's just it I I, I just hate that I thought Ronald Jones had huge value going where he was in the fifth round, sixth round. That value is yeah. totally evaporated overnight, and um, I think I think it's just going to be a ride the hot hand. Bruce Arians has said over and over again who his starting running back is, and it turned out not to be them. There's yeah. there's very much past history in, in saying that, so I think you just kind of ride the passing attack and try to stay away as much as possible unless the value just gets to the point where it's just overwhelming. Yeah. All right. Let's move into some of these tips. What's your uh, what's your first Tips. draft tip? What do you got? This sounds pretty uh, straightforward. Like this is almost like a culmination episode. I feel like for us because we've been doing this for four months now, and what, you said this episode twenty seven. Yes, sir. So we have done deep dives on positional groups, wide receivers, one running back twos, tight ends, quarterbacks, whatever you need, go check them out in the archives. This this is one of those things where we've already done deep dives and this is more of like, Hey, drafts are this weekend. And these are things that we think you guys need to do to try to win your league. And this sounds so simple. And I think a lot of mine are simple, but it, I'm almost saying these things almost to remind myself more than anything else. And my first one is just relax and have fun. Like you, you, you're doing this with people, you know, generally. And if you, if you've done a lot of preparation and this is the most preparation I've ever done for a fantasy football season ever, where I get, I get nervous and I get tense and I want to do so well that I like, like I build things up too much in my head and I like if something is, it doesn't go my way. Like I remember somebody taking Randy Moss in my cousin's league at like pick five and I had pick seven and it just screwed my entire draft up because I wanted Randy Moss so bad in the first round. And I didn't think oh. I thought I thought guaranteed I'm getting Randy Moss and then he was gone and it literally screwed up my entire draft. Oh, like, no. 
like what I want people that are listening to do is just relax, have fun, be prepared and just enjoy hanging out with friends and drafting a league winner. You've already done the preparation. So just relax and have fun. It sounds simple, but I'm more reminding myself of that than anything is just, Hey, have a cocktail if you're of age and just have, have a good time and sit back and talk with friends and and goof around a little bit. Absolutely. And uh, make sure you give each other a hard time about each other's drafts while you're doing it. Oh, like, that's coming. All right. Um, I guess mine are a little more like geared around what I what my draft philosophy actually is. Um, and that is my first tip is going to be draft running backs early and that the mid round yep. wide receiver value is there. If yep. you guys have listened or watched to any of our watched any of our mock drafts like or even we just did a couple episodes where we rev- where we reviewed the ADPs on both Yahoo and ESPN and it's just insane. We have guys that we think are going to be top 12, top 10 receivers that are right now going in the 4th and 5th rounds. So yep. Load up on those running backs early in the first couple rounds. You know, if you're going to reach for somebody, um, reach for a different position so that way you can get ahead and then go go for those middle round receivers because there's going to be tremendous value. Um, yeah, those eight, those 80 please me's um, ep- episodes nice. were really <laughs> sorry, not, not as good as the drop. drop in. Yeah, <laughs> please me. Um, Though those two episodes where we're breaking down the ESPN draft position and Yahoo draft position, and they are substantially different, and it's good to understand the differences just as where uh, you know from where players are ranked and what what you can expect if you're drafting either one, where it can be substantially different. Again, just go online and type in draft trends, ESPN draft trends, where they have them live, so you can see where people are going. You can also get auction values. I th- those two episodes are really good because it kind of tease into where we think the value is and it's almost a reflection of the previous like 10 episodes where we're actually ranking players those are really the like culmination episodes so to speak of of where we actually think value is so if you're like hey oh shit it is september 4th (laughs) and and i have a draft in in six hours what would you listen to it would be the 80 80 please me episodes where we, we kind of focus in and and tell you, you where be round by round at. targets like that's what we're yeah. gonna that's what those are our round by round targets so yeah th- th- that's for sure and jason to your point like i learned so much in your in your mock draft episodes and even when we've been mocking where it's just like I've traditionally been the, hey, take wide receiver early. Don't take running back early. You'll find them later. And it seems to be the exact opposite this year um, for whatever reason. So your point's a good one where it's, hey, get those wi- get those running backs early. All the wide receiver values after round four, five, six, um, you'll, you'll find the targets as long as you listen to some of the episodes we've talked about. So a- along with that, to to some extent, my, my next tip is don't stop mocking um yeah mock like, mock baby like go on like download the sleeper app go on sleeper dot app on your um or go on espn and do mocks or go on yahoo and do mocks the more mocks that you do especially once you know the draft position that you're that you have the more reps you have at it and what to expect and you know where people are going and you know what you can expect in future rounds if you do x y to figure out what your what your abc is going to be later I, I cannot tell you enough to just keep mocking, especially with the news of Fournette switching teams, just trying to figure out where he's potentially going. I think you're going to see like a three round gap there of where he's actually going. But it's it's good to know just what the most recent expectations are. So as soon as you know where you're drafting, don't stop mocking. Run it over and over and over again. If you keep ending up with the same players, chances are you're probably going to be able to get them in those spots. So just make sure you're comfortable and happy with where they're going. The only thing I would have to add to that is know what platform that you're playing on, that your league is hosted on, and you want to be mock drafting on that platform. Uh, especially if you guys are drafting live on the computer and not live in person and whatnot, because um, when you're mocking and when you're actually drafting in person, that site or platform will have its own recommended players. 
And so you want to know how your site's own rankings and own ADPs will be affecting who goes where in drafts um, because it does make a difference. And so that's also why we did an ESPN and a Yahoo ADP um, thing. So that would be my additional little mock me thing. Um, Don't mock me. Mock yourself. (laughs) And uh, one of the things uh learned or picked up at in mocking and um that we talked about or i talked about in my first tip about potentially taking running backs early and maybe reaching for for a a non-running back wide receiver position so reaching for uh or not even necessarily reaching but selecting a quarterback or tight end early i think my advice would be of the two positions i would say that you're better off selecting uh, a tight end early and waiting on quarterbacks because I feel like there is a much steeper cliff for tight ends after the first two or three, then it's just a drop off. And then everybody has a bazillion questions about them versus if you take a quarterback, sure. Okay. You might not land Lamar Mahomes, but you know, uh, Matthew Stafford is was out here last year only averaging like five, six points less a game than Lamar Jackson was before he got hurt. So there, I'm just saying there's a lot more value uh, at the quarterback position late than there is at tight end. Tight end, it's like, it, I don't know. If, if, if you don't get one of the first two, three tight ends, wait, wait to like the double digit rounds. If you don't get a tight end early, you're going to have a tight end for the rest of your draft. Let's just let's just put it that way, right? It's one of those things where you're just going to be like, "Ah, who am I going to get?" Yeah. Ah. Well, I guess I do have if so if you if you miss on tight end or uh it okay, if you so I think if you if you miss on tight end or quarterback late like until the end of the draft because you put one of them off, uh I just want to plug a couple little late round uh Guys, I like at both of those positions. There we go. Um, Some bonus. Bonus. Uh, Herndon with the Jets, Gesicki with the Dolphins, and then Jarwin with uh, the Cowboys. Although there was a report out that uh, Jarwin could be potentially looking at some reduced playing time if he's not able to improve his run blocking. They think that uh, basically they don't want to put him on the field unless he can run block. Because if they put them on a field, it means it's going to be a pass play and they don't want to give away that it's going to be a passing play. So the team came Mike, out. Mike McCarthy's never had it. Like, I'm still waiting for Jermichael Finley to be good. Like, I've <laughs> never. I, <laughs> I, I, Mike, Mike McCarthy's never had a good tight end ever. Like, I <laughs> just whatever. And, and then if you uh, if you if you miss out on QB. Um, some QBs uh, that I like that are being drafted currently outside of the top 12 include Daniel Jones, who was, uh, who had the most 30 plus point games last season outside of Lamar Jackson, seven Daniel Jones, had your three. guy, my Dude, God, he's going to finish in the top 12. You and then him. I think Joe Burrow like could light it up. And I also think Teddy Brid- Bridgewater could surprise. Um, second pass happiest offense last year for the Panthers. And don't forget, so. Joe Burrow's already talking up his uh, relationship with Mr. Boyd in that offense. And I'm yeah. just saying that's why I have Boyd over AJ Green. He he's raving about Tyler Boyd already. So there you he, go. So that was a little. The, yeah. Go ahead. He, he, yeah, loved, no, I, he loved this. He loved the slot in college. He's gonna love the slot in uh, in the NFL. Yeah. And who doesn't and, love the slots? <laughs> I like to play slots. There we go. Um, so that was kind of a little two for one bonus. Alex, what's your next tip? <laughs> I, I wrote all these down and they, every time I look at them, I'm just like, that's so stupid. I love um, it. But, but here's number three, be prepared and breathe. You're listening to us. Just you're, breathe. You're already, you've already done more research than probably 80% of the people in your draft. I was going to say everybody else in your league. If you've watched us or you know who we are, we're so obscure still. It's like you had to do some digging to find us. And cheers to you. I mean, while you're here, might as well like, subscribe, follow on whatever platform you're watching Shameless or listening plug. On. My oh, goodness. I'm a yeah. man of do the it. pod. 
Yeah, no, but like, what's the worst thing that could happen? I, I had somebody text me being like, hey, where are your rankings? I'm like, www.thefantasyfootballsackos.com is where you can find all of our rankings Hello? that are up to date as of like a, a week ago. And it's Leonard on the bottom Fournette, of every YouTube video. <laughs> well, yeah, but sometimes people forget or like they <sighs> listen or they just know that you're doing a fantasy football podcast, but they don't actually know anything about what you're actually talking about. Right. Um. And somebody's like, hey, uh, I took Odell Beckham in the second round. What do you think? And I'm like, Seward. I'm like, no, that's terrible. He's like, you have him ranked outside your top 24, man. What the hell? And I'm like, okay, one, you clearly have not listened to a single word we've said. Two, do you really think he's going to be better than Jarvis Landry? And three, why are you taking 2016 Odell Beckham? That was four years ago. And do you really think Baker's better than Trubisky? Like, there are really many things like you are if you're listening to this, you are prepared. If you've listened to any of the other literally, we have like a full day of podcasts. You could literally 24 hours of podcasts that you could listen to at this point. And if you listen to any of them, you're going to be more prepared. So just don't freak out. You're prepared and just go in there confidently. You're already prepared. Breathe. Things get tense occasionally. And what's the worst that could happen? You're going to find the players you want if you've listened to us and you're going to have your own opinions, even if you don't agree with us. Just go in there confidently and just destroy people. Yeah, right. I mean, some people are going to argue Odell played last season heard and that's why he didn't have the season he was supposed to have. But like my thing was him and Jarvis had the same stat line. And yeah. I'd rather get Jarvis a bazillion rounds later than take Odell in the second or third for the name, number one. And number two, you got just you have Stefanski as your coach now. Like he's the run a bajillion times. It's the Nick Chubb Kareem Hunt show. It's not a passing attack. So I don't hey, know. And he could he could still be a top twelve wide receiver. On talent. But, uh, sure. On talent, for sure. Just you know. The, the stats are out there. They back them up. I think this is a very logical focused podcast and logic doesn't always win out in fantasy because shit's random. But yeah. if, if you're you going luck. to stick, yeah, you have to have luck. Half of fantasy football is luck. Injuries. You, that could be its own. T- like regardless of all yeah. the tips, if you do everything right, you still need luck at the end of the day to be good or to have a successful fantasy football season like anybody can get hurt at any time any coach can put somebody in a doghouse at any time you got covid sprinkled in on top of everything else this season like you're gonna need some luck you gotta have luck unless they retire screw you andrew (laughs) all right uh i think it's my turn now um my next tip is for the later rounds draft for upside don't draft for floor draft for upside don't be out here taking adrian peterson because you think the guy is going to get you know 150 to 200 carries they're going to be for like i understand i understand his yards per carry went up and it was uh you know better last year and year over year but like the upside in that offense is antonio gibson potentially taking over the workhorse role in the second half of the season like um Alex, or Bryce Love. I, oh, well, I I have a couple of examples here. Alex, would you rather draft Antonio Gibson or Marlon Mack? At their current ADPs? Uh, yes. So currently, Antonio Gibson is going as running back 44, 147th overall. Marlon Mack is going <laughs> as running back 42. Like Marlon Mack, to me, doesn't have a ceiling other than a Taylor, an injury to Taylor. Yeah, I would agree. Um, Because he's not the third down back. And Gibson could take over that whole offense. Like, to me, Gibson's a league winner. And Marlon Mack is was replaced. Or at least they're working on replacing him. Um, I mean, at ADPs, I would take Gibson. But I I have a caveat with that where, again, Taylor's a rookie. Marlon Mack, we like... Marlon Mack has fallen so far off that I almost feel like there's some sort of value there. Potentially. Me me Um, personally. Then the next one, Damian Harris or Naheem Hines and Adrian Peterson. Hmm. Order those one, two, three. Damian Harris, Naheem Hines, and AP. 
This sounds weird, but I would throw Hines at one on there. Gross. Only, beca- <laughs> only because Philip Rivers has checked down so much historically to running backs. He's playing one out of three downs. I one know that. out of three. But if if Taylor and Max never been a receiving back. I know. And I, I think the Chargers checked down to running backs like 30% of their plays last year on passing plays where you're almost playing the quarterback more than you are the player, right? So, I mean, t- even Tom Brady, Tom Brady and Phillip Rivers are are notorious for checking down because they don't want to throw that pick. And so that's the only reason why I would say Hines. And that's that's just a personal, personal thing. But I, I get where you're going with it. Where would you go with Damien? Would you take Harris or would you take AP? I would. I'm never going to take Adrian Peterson. Okay. So then Harris would be two and AP would be three. For me, it's it's Damian Harris there. I think Damian Harris could also be a league winner. Uh, now, he did just get injured. And uh, evidently, his availability for week one is in question. That is uh, Roto World News today. Um, so that doesn't help. But... He was so good in the uh, the off season training camp training camp practices that they were talking about him pushing for three down roll um, potential or supplanting Sony Michelle as the starter in that offense. Like if that's the kind of upside I'm looking for in the double digit rounds, I'm not looking for Adrian Peterson, and I'm not really excited about Naheem Hines getting on the field for you know one play out of three downs like and yeah, he probably I, won't get the ball so i hear you but do you really want anything to do with the patriots backfield which is notorious for not having a, a great running back especially with cam there who's probably going to be their goal line running back i'm and not you have, i'm just saying you, there's you value Lamar there Miller like there, that starting running Michelle. back has value i don't think that there's i don't think a starting running back there does honestly we'll see he, we'll see he'll we'll see um, so I'm just saying I'm drafting for upside in late rounds. I'm not drafting for floor. Um, and the only way I guess I would consider Naheem Hines would be if I was in a full PPR or had some super bonus for receptions, because if it was ever a standard or a half, I would not take Naheem Hines. All right. But I'm, I'm fine with that. I, I'm going to avoid <laughs> the Washington football team's backfield, especially with Haskins <laughs> there. And I'm going to avoid the Name Patriots the starter. backfield. Yeah, he was, um, which does not help your boy uh, McLaren. So I, I just, yeah, I'm, I'm a Heinz guy in those three. I don't like any of them just for clarification. There you go. All right. What's your, uh, what's your next hot tip? <laughs> My, uh, Non uh, specific football tips, uh, fantasy football tips here is do what makes you happy. Oh, so if you've been doing fantasy football for as long as we have, where um, I mentioned this last time, where Frank Gore and Tom Brady are like the constants in your life, and you have gotten burned by half the league on multiple occasions, if you don't like somebody, don't take them and and watch them just run on your bench because you hate looking at their name every week. Do it. Do what makes you happy. Take somebody that you want to root for. Take a young guy that you've never had a relationship before with. Like it's almost like online dating to a certain extent. You just got to say, are there a lot of young guys that you're looking forward to having relationships with? Maybe. I mean, if they're good, I want to have a relationship with them. If they're not a good guy, then I don't want to get burned by them if over and over and over again. Or open your car door. You're not interested. You want yeah. somebody that's considerate. Yeah. Buy me a drink. Like you sit don't me want down the, at the table. You don't want the have one a, night stand that is Josh Gordon who may or may not get suspended for the rest of the season after two weeks or three weeks. You don't no. want the hold on. Hold on. You, you don't want to get Josh ghosted. No, no, no. You don't want to get ghosted. I had a hell of a one night stand with Josh Gordon really? like six years ago. Yeah. He won me a title and I mean, it's, well, it was, un, it was one of those things where it was unforgettable where you just kind of want to keep falling in love with him over and over again. The Seahawks you know re-signed him to a one year, $1 million contract and he's anticipated to be reinstated into the league. So maybe you guys mm. could rekindle some flames. Ooh. 
We might. I mean, I don't mean to make oof. your heart race, but I mean, oh. it it <laughs> flutters. Just like there's just some guys that you like watching. For example, Dwayne Bow of like seven years ago. Everybody had Dwayne Bow on their team at one point. Some, sometimes there's just some grown men that you like to watch, and sometimes you hate watching them. It's <laughs> like do do what makes you happy. So don't don't sit yourself don't sit yourself with oh I had Le'Veon Bell and I drafted him the year that he set out the whole year. Guess what? You're not going to take Le'Veon Bell, and it doesn't matter how far he falls. Don't take him. You don't want to see what he's going to do this year. You'd rather watch somebody else be miserable with him. You need to be that not jealous ex where you're just like, you know what? I hope you're happy, and just let 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 them spread their wings and fly. And if they fly, that's great. And you just hope they get too close to the sun and burn. Did you see the latest uh, from Adam Gase on Love Bell, though? It, his quote about how uh, they they came together and discussed their late August issues, him and Love Bell. And he said it was... It Is was it all, a magazine? He said it was all just a miscommunication. And his quote said, I know how hard it is to believe, but we do actually like each other. <laughs> Love Bell likes you because you control his playing time, homie. I don't think he actually cares a you know a darn about you, but uh. that's 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 a coach that said that. That's Adam Gase. He said, uh, "I know it's hard to believe, but we do actually like each other." Him and Love Bell. That's embarrassing. They cleared the air, but I bet he was wow. Like, he was like this the whole time, looking around, <laughs> looking around. Frank. Frank Gore for president. Oh, my goodness. All right. My next tip is play the lottery. Get a lottery ticket when you draft. And you know who my lottery Ooh. tickets are? Chase Edmonds, Alexander Madison, Latavius Murray, Tony Pollard. And I'm I'm putting J.K. Dobbins in there because I think he would be a stud if something happened to Mark Ingram. But to, to, I guess we can, we can give a little update here on our last episode. We talk about uh, Alvin Kamara holding out. He is back at practice now. Sean Payton said that he's uh, a huge part of their plans for week one, and they're evidently really close, and uh, Alvin's leaving it up to his agent to iron out the final contract details, whatever those are. They don't have he's any. Not, he's not getting more than a one-year bump in pay because of their salary cap. And that's As fine. A He's making as, embarrassing money right now, so maybe it just uh, it's just enough to get him through the year. As a quick joke, one of my coworkers uh, this evening said that their team name in every league is going to be the Kamara virus. Oh, okay. Which I actually thought was somewhat clever. Sorry. It starts with the same K sound. Okay. Yeah. Um, Man, we, we should sprinkle in some team names one of these episodes. But uh, yeah, I, I thought Kamara virus was good. Interesting. The the other one that she said was country ho take Mahomes, oh, which boy. I thought was pretty good too. <laughs> <laughs> but uh so so Lat Murray was an RB1 last season when Alvin Kamara missed time. He, um he scored 3 touchdowns in the two games that Kamara missed and he scored 5 on the season. So that will um, work. Yeah. But um so if 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 Kamara was to sit out or miss any time, Lat Murray would be huge. And then there's also Kamara evidently taking an epidural in his back, which I th- is concerning. I think my um, wife did that during labor. Well, Alvin Kamara did it on a Tuesday, so there's that. Oh. <laughs> Um, and then the rest of those guys, I mean, I think that the rest of these guys, uh, Edmonds, Madison, Pollard and Dobbins would just be absolute stud RB ones. If something was to happen to the running back in front of them. So yeah. And and almost more than ever this year with, with the Kamara virus going on, maybe you do spend a late round pick on backups instead of trying to take a wide receiver two in an offense, just hoping for that jackpot lottery backup running back to get some pl- more playing time than or they would normal normally get. Well, I'm, yeah. And I'm just saying like the Edmonds Madison, I mean, there was talk about there's, and there's still talk about Dalvin potentially sitting out when we come, when week one actually comes next week. So 
maybe Madison. I mean, that would, if if Dalvin sits out next week, it, the the league winning value that Alexander Madison would represent in anybody that gets him late this weekend would just be skyrocketed off the charts, like MVP level. If Dalvin chooses to sit out and protest of his contract, so have you still not watched Hamilton yet? <sighs> no, I'm sorry. All right, you need to watch Hamilton before the season starts because every time <laughs> every time you say Alexander Madison, it literally drives me up a wall that you're not singing it. Um, um no, hold on. I have a question for you. So if you kay. draft Camara and if you draft Cook, because I don't want to fade either one of them completely. I think that they should still be drafted in the first round. At what point during your draft do you pull the trigger Ooh. and pick them? They're currently being drafted in like the ninth, tenth rounds. And to me, I think that's too late. Uh, well, I think it's too late for I, Madison, I, especially with Kamara coming back to practice. I'm not as concerned about Lat Murray, but with the Dalvin Cook holdout potential still there, I think it's the, the you know it's the most likely to happen out of any of it. I would take Matt if I if I took Dalvin Cook, I would take Madison probably in like the sixth round. I think that's a little, I was going to say seventh. Uh, Again, that's not that big of a difference because you're talking on the back half of the sixth, first round or front half of the seventh. I mean, yeah, you you were, because you're probably taking the first five picks. Yeah. No, I know. I'm I'm just saying that there's not that big of a difference between what we were thinking. Um, You have to land them is the bottom line. You can't not back those two guys up because you don't know what's going on. And I think that's part of the risk, unless you're in the top three, that that's the risk with after the top three. If you're not getting CMC, Barkley, or Zeke, uh, Zeke that there's that there's risk with those next guys because of contracts, because of potential injuries. And so for me, it's three line. And then if you if you would prefer to take Michael Thomas over those guys where you have a question mark, depending on how your league's set up, I get it because if you're going to take one of those guys at pick four or five overall, then you're going to have to spend on their backup a little bit later and you're going to have to spend a little bit earlier to get them to make sure that you lock that position in on those teams. Right. It's just part of, I think what you're going to have to do, because if like, if somebody takes a backup, then you better take the other guys back up. I guess yeah. is what I'm saying because you, you you can't get stuck with your pants down around your ankles on that. <laughs> and then I guess real quick while we're talking about late round guys, my last tip is uh, don't be afraid to to draft Antonio Brown. He's currently going as wide receiver oh. seventy. Currently going as wide receiver seventy, 170th overall, or in the fifteenth round. So. If you take a defense or a kicker early or whatever, and you find yourself drafting players still, just a defense, you can take a kicker early. Uh, well, you understand what I'm saying. You know, I wouldn't. <laughs> for me, I'm not drafting either one of those two positions until my last two picks. But if you choose to, go ahead and pick one. I think it could definitely be argued that like. Ninth, tenth round or later, I don't think anybody has more potential to finish like on a per game basis in the top three of their position than a- Antonio Brown if he is signed somewhere. But eight game suspension looming, I'm just that would be crazy if he was if he was signed somewhere and came back. So I don't think anybody's drafting him in any league that I'll be in. Um, and you just have to figure out when to pick him up before somebody else does in your league. Honestly, I, w- I would not waste a draft pick on him until he's signed somewhere. No. Interesting. No, okay. Just wouldn't, would, wouldn't do it. Just my personal philosophy. The league winning um, potential. I got, though. I got, t- uh, one thing I would pay attention to is if Debo's activated this weekend uh, or taken off the non-football injury list, um, because again, he's he's the guy that's going so late that was literally a wide receiver one last year in that offense. Tavon Austin was just put on IR by the 49ers today. Another <laughs> 49ers they wide can't receiver, buy that, a receiver that's hurt. 
I don't know what the hell they're doing to them. Like, I are they just having them like, like just cut back and forth until they tear something in their leg? It's unbelievable how many people are hurt uh, from the wide receivers. Uh, sorry, the wide receiver core of the 49ers. It's unbelievable. So, I mean, Debo's the guy that for me is going so late in the seventh, eighth round where like that value is incredible there. I think um, it's going to go up. So, but that that's not even a tip. I, I think, think it's it should go up, though. Um, I yeah. I, if he's Where announced would you as being him? active this weekend, right now I'd take him the seventh. Um, you wouldn't take him in the sixth. He's not, he's not going before that though. That's that's just where he's not going. I'm saying. Uh, I mean, if everything keeps trending the way it's going, and he's not on the pup, or he, he's you know it's looking like he'll be activated off of it, then he should be going in the fourth. You think even if even if he misses one game? Probably I mean, he was that good last year at the end of the year when he was healthy and they have nobody else to throw the ball to. I was just saying, I would, again, I, I'd probably he- spend a matters. fifth on him because I would probably spend a fifth on him because I think he probably misses at least one game. But I don't think you have to because every list like going into this weekend, if you're drafting at all and you're like. The biggest thing, and I didn't even have this written down or anything, but print off the ESPN draft sheet and find the guys that we've talked about that are like so like a Debo Samuel, where he's probably ranked as like the 45th best wide receiver, where you can just circle them. And like as soon as you're like getting down to that, like to like 35, be like, OK, time to take Debo. So nobody else does sort of thing where just print off that list, whether it's PPR, non PPR, and just find the people that you know are just too low and circle them to make sure you don't miss them when the, when the time gets to be right. That, that would be my biggest thing. Um, my, my next tip, I got, I got two left. One is heckle, heckle, heckle. Just be a complete dick to people. Get in their heads. Talk to them. Go ahead. I just want to no, say Debo's Debo's ranked 44th by ESPN. I was one off. Not bad. But it, like that's like circle him. That's that's incredible. Don't take him until you have to understand where he is on other people's cheat sheets that they're using and use that against them to wait as long as you can until you have to pull the trigger. I, was say, um, I would still take him well before that. Yeah, right. I mean, don't wait too long, but wait a long enough period of time where you were like <laughs> suckers. And, and that's that's where the heckle 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 comes in for me where getting people's heads, tell them how good of a job you're doing and tell them how bad of a job they're doing because it does throw people off. Like if, if somebody tells me that I'm doing terribly, I like melt and like want to go into a ball <laughs> and I'm like, I'm doing, I'm not doing bad. You're do, you're uh, no, you're doing bad. No, your draft's bad. No, you suck. Um, <laughs> so like, just think about that and like play mind games with people. That's, that's part of what we're doing here where you like, this is where you're setting the foundation for your fantasy football team. It's okay to be a little bit of a dick to people so that they, where you throw them off so that you can throw yourself on somebody else. Like that, that's part of fantasy football is, is talking smack. And if nobody's stirring the pot, be the pot stirrer and create, some animosity amongst people like your friends generally when you're doing this. So like be the guy and be like, Oh, Odell in the second. I mean, I would much rather have Jarvis Landry five rounds later, but good pick dude. Like you can be super sarcastic. Oh, Amari Cooper. Oh man. You haven't practiced in four days. Did you, did you know he's might not even play week one and Michael Gallup um, basically had the same points per game as he did last year. And I'm going to get him around seven, man. Great pick though. Like those are the things that like, if you can really like stick a knife in somebody's back and turn it over (laughs) and over again, like that's what I'm looking for. And that's what I want you to be doing as a, as a super sacco listening to this is just, just rip somebody if they deserve it. Oh yeah. And I'll even add one like for the guy that drafts Clyde Edwards Lair in the first round, just remind him that Daryl Williams is evidently going to be splitting carries with him. It's like per, per uh new, <laughs> the latest from Roto world. So, right. If, if you, if it's not your pick, 
Like, do you know the saying, like, if you don't have something nice to say, don't say it at all? Like, Just instead say it all the time. Yeah, it's like the exact opposite for fantasy football. Like, use every negative thing that you've ever heard about somebody and be like, oh, man, you're taking Tom Brady in the sixth round. Do you know he's 42? Zahir. Like, like, he's really old. Did you know that? Like, if if there is anything that you can use negatively against somebody, just throw it against the wall. They're not going to remember it anyway. And guess what? <laughs> the only the only thing that can happen is positive because it might throw them off their game if, if they're doing well. So <laughs> that's that's my <laughs> that's number five. Heckle, heckle, heckle for me. Um, and the last thing is is have an initial plan. And this kind of goes back to mocking a little bit, but have a plan. Know what you think you're going to do, but don't be afraid to deviate from it if you think it's going to benefit you. Like take us to, you know, if you have two minutes, oh man, I can't believe this guy's there. Just take a quick step back and be like, all right, what does this mean for future rounds? How does this play in for what I've already done? Don't be afraid to pull the trigger on it. You can deviate from your plan, but if it like, just be okay with deviating from it. If, if you already have a quarterback and you're not sure if you should take a tight end or vice versa or whatever, because the value's there, Always take the value. You're yeah. going to be able to find the value later too. You're prepared. So don't be afraid to be like, oh man, I don't know if I can, I don't have a wide receiver yet. It's round five. Can I really be pulling the trigger on another running back? Because uh, David Montgomery is there in round five and you already have three <laughs> running backs. I mean, should you take him there? Because you already have four running backs. But that's or you already value. have three. Right, you already have three running backs, but David Montgomery sitting there around five. Should you do it? Probably not, but is the value there where it's just too good to pass up and you know you can get Brandon Cooks later and you can get um, Debo or whatever. Debo or um, Robert Woods Deontay for some Johnson, reason. Or, we just talked about yeah, in our like, last episode. Like, trust yourself to be able to be like, you know what? Man, this is a this is a RB two f- locked in in my opinion in round five, and I know I already have three, but I'd much rather have him sitting on my bench where I could trade him. Like, just trust trust your instincts and be don't be afraid to load up on something if it's sitting there where you know, especially running backs. If you can load up early on running backs and you can take another one because you can get the wide receiver value on the back end that would be the one thing where i would say oh i've already loaded up on running backs the value is too great just pick another one who cares you'll you'll be fine getting getting the julian edelman's in round eight like you'll be okay i promise so just if the value is too good to pass up just do it and figure it out later um especially if it has to do with running back value because you'll be able to get the wide receivers later Yep. Awesome. C- completely agree. Like the, the wide receiver value is just crazy. Um, yep. I don't have any other tips. I think people are mostly ready again. Listen, like subscribe. Like we're on every platform. Listen to our earlier episodes. Let, you know, listen to us talk through some ED- ADPs. We have all of our ranking videos up. We have our rankings on our website. Like y'all are ready to put the pedal to the metal. Like do some more yeah. mocks. Like football starts in seven days. Like right now we're recording when Thursday night football is going to be going on. It's going to be this like start of the second half right now. I am so freaking fired up and I, it doesn't feel like football seasons here, but I'm just, I'm just ready to go. The, go like the only, the only other thing that I could like possibly mention is like, don't seize up and get frustrated. Just relax, breathe. If something screwed up, like whatever you have to get right back on that same path like you're prepared, just figure it out. If you like, oh my God, Michael Thomas was still there at like pick 11 and I had to take him. Yeah, that's okay. Like take Michael Thomas at 11 and figure out the running backs later. Like if the, if the value's there, take the value and don't freak out. Don't lock yourself in and be like, oh, well, I'm um, pick 11 and the first 10 picks were all running back. Well, I just need to take another running back. No, you don't have to. Like, just because you've prepared for something, it'll be okay. Just relax. <laughs> Don't seize up. It'll, it'll be okay. 
And plus, like, just go listen to the 26, 28 hours of uh, archives that we have. It'll prepare you, I promise. <laughs> and with that, let's transfer to the social media screen. If you guys like today's podcast or found any of our tips helpful, please uh, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, follow us on whatever platform you're listening on, leave us a positive review, especially if you're on an Apple device. Uh, those uh, those Apple reviews basically push up your podcast on all of the other uh, platforms that pull their podcasts directly from the iTunes. So, um, yeah, I think that's all I got. Um, I think it, I'm ready. You ready, Alex? Let's do this. Go time. I don't know if I'm. I don't know if I'm ever ready, but um, I mean, good luck. Send send us your drafts because I, I've gotten some some people send me their drafts, and it's like the same like seven people end up on all the teams, and I'm like. Oh, you've been listening, haven't you? Thank haven't you very you? much. I appreciate it. Also, again, just go check out www.thefantasyfootballsackos.com for all of our rankings um, and send us your team so we can make fun of them or um, agree with how good you are because we're great and Sackos. So good night. Thanks for listening and uh, good luck drafting this weekend. Good luck. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the FF Sackos.